Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So today we're going to go ahead and continue our series on USD by talking about configuration. Configuration can actually be done within the CRM application. So once you install, whether it's the base package or whether it's the sample data package that's been tweaked for the updates for entitlement service level agreements, whatever it is, um, you will be able to actually go in and do most of your application configuration directly through CRM. And then once you save the item, that item will then be pushed out and displayed in the desktop. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this looks in the application. So we've already gone out and used Package Deployer to install the the solution and we actually installed the complete solution that has um, updates for sp1 for 2013 so it actually it has like your entitlements and your service level agreements and those types of things already included as well but if i go into settings i will now see a new option here specifically for unified service desk and this has most of the application controls that you can use to do stuff within Unified Service Desk. Now, the first thing that you're gonna see in here is what is called hosted controls. Now, hosted controls are really the primary elements for United Service Desk. These are what are going to reflect how things display in the application. Now, a hosted control could be used for any number of different things. It could be used to launch a hosted application. So maybe you have a CRM web page that you wanna display in the application. Maybe you have an external line of business application that you wanna display and you wanna bring that in hosted control are a way to do that. This is also a methodology that you can use if you wanted to create like a custom adapter and maybe do like a CTI integration with a phone system. Hosted controls are going to give you the baseline for being able to do that. So there's a variety of different hosted controls, but they are the, the bare bones element for what you would be using in the application. So they're going to represent some type of application functionality. And now if you look at this, you'll see there's a, there's a lot of different options here. You've got toolbar containers that could be used to store toolbars within the application. You can see that we have items specific to accounts and activities in the application that are tied as CRM web pages. And the reason why the hosted type is actually important from a hosted control standpoint is that's going to dictate the type of actions that are available. Now, when you custom create these or when a developer custom creates these, they have the capabilities to decide and create kind of their own UII actions or actions specific to this type of hosted control. But as part of the sample data in the base package that they have from a USD perspective, a lot of these items, particularly with the CRM piece, already have some baseline application functionality loaded in them. Now, those could be things as simple as launching a page, closing a window, saving. Those are all the types of different actions that, that each hosted control will have within the context of the application. And so if I was going to go ahead and just open this account hosted control, you'll see there's not a whole lot in this that's actually defined. And the reason why is because this is really, again, just a container. The actual functionality and what's going to get loaded into this hosted control from an application perspective is really going to be defined by other elements, primarily what are called action calls that we'll talk about here in just a couple of seconds. So you'll see what I've really kind of defined from this situation is the name of the hosted control, which in this case is account because I want to be able to use this for accounts. Now, I wouldn't necessarily have to load just accounts into this. I could load any type of CRM page. I'm using the name more as an identification purpose when we start loading some of this information in there. And then you'll see that I have additional options in here as to the type of hosted control that it is. In this case, it's a CRM page because it will be loading CRM functionality. But as you can see, there's, there's different types of functionality based upon what I want it to do. I have one that's specific to CRM dialogues, which just gives us a little bit more flexibility when working with dialogues. I have CCA hosted applications. So if I have a uh, CCA, CCA application that maybe I had created before and I want to bring into USD, I would have the capabilities to do that from backwards compatibility standpoint. Also, if you're doing any custom development using the HAT or hosted application toolkit, this is also what you would use to load that particular item into the application 
as an external functionality. You'll see I have options here for panel layouts. This is if I want to kind of create custom layouts as far as how things are presented within Unified Service Desk. Maybe I just don't want everything to display in one big window. Maybe I want to separate that window into, you know, two or three smaller windows. This would give me the application to, or the option to do that. And then I've got a couple of other options that you'll see in here, particularly around um, Connection Manager. Uh, connection Manager is what is going to store all of your connections to the CRM organization that you're working with for the primary item that you have displayed within that particular scenario. And then Global Manager, this is a specific hosted control that you can use to execute kind of global action. So if you have things that want you want to take place kind of outside or within the entire scope of the application and not specific to a specific item, this is where you could use Global Manager to kind of help define some of that information from an application perspective. You'll also see in here that then there's just options for, you know, is it going, how's it going to be hosted? Is it going to be an IE process or is it going to use uh, internal WPF? Um, is it going to be a global application? So is it something that's going to be, you know, specific to, um, you know, this particular host control or is it something that's going to be available to be run or executed? outside of that particular context and, and globally throughout the application. Where do you want it displayed? So that's what the display group is going to define from kind of a main panel perspective. And then you have additional information such as the, the display name. And in this case, we're just actually pulling in the name of the, the entity or the record name based upon the account entity and then the address. So we can kind of dictate when these session tabs, as we talked about in previous videos, open up what their name just based upon what we supply here from a display name perspective within the application. And we have the option with some of the localizing uh, capabilities to use localized labels, but ultimately this is going to use the language that pulls from the CRM application as a whole. Now, <clears throat> as I mentioned, East hosted control is going to have a a variety of actions that, that, that are available to them. Now, if you install using the USD package deployer, these actions will be predefined automatically for the application. And so if I come up here into this hosted control and I go to UII actions, these are some of the different actions that I can execute via what are called action calls that we'll talk about in a later video. And so this just kind of tells us, you know, specifically what we want to do. You know, do we want to create a new CRM page? Are we handling a pop-up window? Do we want to fire an event so we can trigger some type of logic to run based upon that, that event? Are we trying to navigate to this particular record? Are we facilitating a find? You know, these are just different types of situations. Now, each hosted control should have an option called default. And, and default really should be an action that does nothing. And, and the reason behind that is so if you need to, you can always call the default action. And at the bare minimum, what it's going to do is basically just open the host control and so it's going to launch the hosted control and then you can define maybe what specific elements are used to populate the data that is that is driven or supplied as part of that hosted control so I want to show you real quick how to create a hosted control. Now, we're not actually going to be able to go in and consume it at this point because before we consume it, I want to show you in some future videos how to use what are called action calls and toolbars and events to, to really facilitate having that item execute and launch in the application. But let's at least show you how you can create a hosted control for a basic custom entity that you might have in Dynamic CRM so you can use it with some of these other items. So in my hosted control area, I'm just going to go ahead and click on new. Now I'm going to go ahead and give it a name. I'm going to call this bank account. Now I'm going to change my USD component type to CRM page. And you'll notice that the options that are there um, change based upon the different type that you're working with. And so again, keep in mind, you know, that there's there's many different types of USD components that you're going to use. Um, each organization or each deployment of USD always needs to have a global manager. It needs to have a connection manager. It should only have one of those items. But there's also items specific for session tabs to allow the capabilities to switch in between sessions. Now, in this case, we're doing just a very simple simplistic CRM page. So you'll notice that the allow multiple pages, the hosting type have already been defined for us. I'm not going to make this global. The only other key thing that I would need to have here is the display group. And by default, that'll switch to main panel. 
if I wanted to have a different panel, which we can talk about in some other videos as well, we can show you how you can define the different panel. Now, from a display name standpoint at this point, um, I could use what are called replacement parameters and have it actually replace information with data from the application. But again, we haven't necessarily talked about replacement parameters. So for our purpose today, I'll just go ahead and enter in the display name. And then I can go ahead and hit save and close. And you'll notice I don't do anything else with this because all of this other stuff is going to be handled through what are called action calls that and navigation rules and different things that are going to dictate how this is going to open within the application. But the host of control is now created and I could now go ahead and consume that through other contexts of the application itself. So that's going to do it for your quick little overview in regards to hosted controls. Tune in next week where we'll actually go in and talk a little bit about action calls and then in a few other videos we'll tie in things like events and navigation rules so you can actually fully see how this all comes together to create a working solution within Microsoft Dynamics Unified Service Desk. So as always, from all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, thanks a lot for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Take care and have a good one.